the miracle in our universe. All of the life forms known to mankind exist nowhere but here, our home planet, the Earth. What fascinates me about space travel is that it's the frontier, the final frontier we face as human beings, and it's out there waiting for us. We don't know what's beyond it. I feel the way people probably used to feel when they stood on the beach and looked out at the ocean and asked themselves, what's beyond the horizon? Houston, Texas, historic, even legendary location. This is NASA's Johnson Space Center. The conquest of space began here in 1961. It's now the starting point for Alexander Gast's biggest adventure. The young German astronaut will fulfill his lifelong dream in 2014. This is when he becomes the third German to travel to the International Space Station. We will follow him around the world as he completes the world's most exclusive training program. It looks like a computer game, but it's really survival training at the NASA Virtual Reality Lab. There's a windrails here. Oh, it looks like uh, I must have come up away from structure. It's like my safety tether is not connected or adrift. This is the worst nightmare. To be flung away from the space station, out of control. Okay, I'm gonna deploy the safer. Pull the right side of my handle. Take the module out. There it is. And I switch to on. The Columbus in view and I will use positive pitch to get back at the point in the middle that I want to go back to and I give it a positive impulse, plus X. Okay, slowing down. And you're out of GN2. All right, all right. And I'm uh, waiting for the handrails here. And I got it. Mission Control. This is the iconic center in the history of American space exploration. History from the past. Milt Heflin is an old veteran of NASA. He took part in the Apollo program. The original control room from those days is an almost sacred site for him. We have entered the cathedral of uh, human space flight operations. Uh, what a I hope you can feel the cathedral. Yeah. 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 Oh, this is, I, yes, I, absolutely. When I come in this room, I've worked in this room uh, as a flight controller and a flight director. And I mean, you're in the room where we landed on the moon for the very first time, July 20th, 1969. And, and all the landings that, that took place were controlled from mission control right here in this, in this room. Let me tell you about the American flag that hangs over here in the corner. It has been to the moon and nice. back. It flew to the moon on the command service module, stayed in the command service module in lunar orbit, stayed there. Apollo 17. And Apollo 17, and then uh, and brought back here and hung in mission control. I think when you enter this room as a young astronaut, you immediately get goosebumps because it's really the closest place on Earth to the moon landing. Just imagining that all the stories I've known since I was little took place right here in this room, and of course also in a spaceship, that's a fantastic experience. What's so special about this room? I, um, it, it all has to do with the people. I mean, that's that's what this is all about. It's it's a matter of uh, the camaraderie and the family feeling and the team. You know, teamwork. That's a word that I mean, it really happens in this room. I mean, people in this room, 
want to succeed. It shows you that when you have the support and the dedication and the commitment, you can, you can do almost anything you, you set your mind to. And that's what I enjoy about being in mission control. My grandfather was a ham radio operator with a little room in the basement where there was always equipment humming, all kinds of radios and antennas and buttons and knobs. When I was three, four, five, six years old, I was fascinated by it. One day, I think I was about six, he somehow managed to focus the antenna on the moon and send radio waves that reflected off the surface of the moon and returned to his antenna, all the way back to the Earth. He let me talk into the microphone, and two and a half seconds later, that's the speed of light and also how long it takes for radio waves to travel there and back, I heard my own voice very distorted on the radio. For me, as a six-year-old, that was incredible. It was as if a little part of me had been to the moon and back. Our European astronauts are trained at the European Astronaut Center in Cologne. Alexander Gast was selected from a pool of more than 8,400 candidates. ESA is not looking for daredevils, but professionals who are able to keep their cool even in extreme situations, and who are able to work in diverse scientific disciplines. This centrifuge can create artificial gravity five times as strong as that on Earth. Alexander Gast loves challenging himself to the extreme. The faster it turns, the more Alexander Gast has the feeling he's standing straight. The researchers hope to create artificial gravity that will allow future astronauts to engage in physical fitness training in space. You can certainly feel the blood traveling down. It is hoped that someday in the future, it will be possible to better cope with the side effects of weightlessness. At NASA headquarters in Houston, Texas, Alexander Gast is training in the world's largest indoor swimming pool. It holds 23 and a half million liters of water and is more than 12 meters deep. In the pool is a life-size replica of the entire space station. For six hours without a break, Alexander Gast practices under simulated weightless conditions. Later in space, the missions outside the station will take just as long. It's a unique place to work. Nowhere else is it possible to so perfectly simulate weightless conditions and practice performing tasks on the space station's exterior. They have to repair damage on their own or replace defective modules. Today, the instructors have planned a dangerous challenge for Alexander Gast. NASA colleague Clayton Anderson receives instructions that Alexander Gast cannot hear. Clayton Anderson isn't reacting. That means mortal danger. Alexander Gast must act quickly. The unconscious astronaut must be brought back into the space station as soon as possible. He only has a few moments' time, and if this were a real mission in space, it would mean the difference between life and death. Basically, it's like running a marathon the whole time. And when you're doing exercises like incapacitated crew member, where your colleague is unconscious and you have to get him back to the airlock as fast as possible, it really pushes your limits. I can tell, my hands, my muscles are exhausted and basically it's like that every time I take off the suit. We've been venturing into space for 50 years. 
When you think about it, how much we've achieved in those 50 years. We've been to the moon and other heavenly bodies. We have a space station in orbit above the Earth where we can live, research, work. We human beings are such a curious and inquisitive species. We won't ever stop looking for answers. Of that, I'm certain.